So I began to consider something recently, and that is that the Logos web app has gotten really good. Uh, if you've not looked at it in a few years, you need to go back and check it out. Now, it's not available to everyone. You have to have you know, a certain basic uh, uh, tier of uh, ownership. However, it's really good. And in fact, uh, there's a lot of reasons why you may want to choose to run Logos in the web app instead of the desktop or the mobile version. And here's just a, a few of the reasons. First of all, you may want to run it because on a fast internet connection, it's kind of quicker, a little bit leaner and meaner, so it'll run a little bit faster than uh, the desktop app. Uh, second of all, uh, you can save hard drive space. Now, my library is kind of a mid-level library compared to other users, and I'm using about 80 gigabytes of hard drive space. If you've got one of those uh, new Macs with only 256 gigabytes or your Windows computer only has uh, that much, then 80 gigabytes is a lot, and maybe you just want to run it in your browser. The third reason that you might want to run the web app is the web app, the user interface, is actually a little bit simpler than the desktop app. And then finally, you know, what if you're running on Linux or the Chrome OS? Uh, then you may want to run the web app instead. So what we're going to look at is uh, how to install the web app as an application so that it sort of runs like a program even though you're opening a browser. It's a little bit quicker. You just click the button, it pops right up, it takes away some of the distraction that's around it, and uh, it almost looks like an, an application. So we're gonna look at how to do that in Safari on a Mac, in Chrome, on just about any platform. Now, I haven't tested this on Chrome OS or on Linux, but I assume that it works. And then third, uh, if you're a Windows user, we'll show you how to do it in Edge, which actually is maybe one of the best ways uh, to run it. So we've got Safari open. Now I have a, a icon that I link to the web app. Now just so you know, I'm running the beta version and it may look a little different than your version of it, but uh, it's pretty much the same. You can run the beta by instead of going to app.logos.com, just go to beta.app.logos.com. So here you are in Safari, right? And uh, what you might want to do is then add a link to this website without all this extra cruft up here. So go on up here to the menu, to File, and then down to Add to Doc. And it pops up. It gives you a chance to give it a title. All right. And so I'm just going to give it Logos Web, save a, a little space on my doc. Uh, hit add and then you notice what happened is down here on the dock uh, you see it it is right there so now if we go out of Safari let's quit Safari and you click on that icon right there notice it's gonna pop right up and uh, I'm on a, a fairly fast connection and here it is it's all up you don't have your URL bar you don't have the bookmarks bar uh, there's fewer distractions, you get a little more space for your Bible study. So that's running it in Safari on a Mac. In Chrome, it's a little bit different because you have to install a, uh, a, a, an extension. So now I've got the extension installed. It's right here. If you click, this is your extensions icon. It shows all of them. And this extension is called, let's see if I can find it, install as app install as app and uh, what it does is now I can take this website I've set it so that it shows up all the time you may not want that if you don't want that then find it and unpin it like that I'm gonna leave it there just for the sake of this demonstration so you click on it and it immediately puts an icon in the Chrome Apps folder. Now, where do you find this? Uh, you can see down here at the bottom, this long string, but I can tell you, just go to your home folder. That's the one with your name on it. And uh, you go to Applications, and then Chrome Apps, and there it is. Now, it's interesting because right here, this is the Safari one, and uh, this is the Chrome one. And so you just double click that, 
and it opens up and you're ready to uh, run. Now, unfortunately, doing it in Chrome, you don't lose all of the extra cruft up here that you don't want. <laughs> so it's basically just a bookmark, which I don't like too much. Um, I, I kind of wish that it would uh, open automatically as a, a full screen. But let's say you want to drag this down onto your dock. It doesn't look as good down here. So you click it and you open it. And of course what you could do is then click to make it go full screen. I don't know that that really helps you much. So honestly, if you're a Chrome user, you don't get uh, the same experience you would on Safari. All right, so here we are over in Windows and I'm gonna go ahead and open Edge, which believe it or not, Edge is a really good browser on Windows. And here again, you see all of this extra junk up here that you may not want. And in Edge, what you need to do is you go over here to this menu bar, which shows you your settings. You come down here to Apps, and it gives you the option to install Logos Bible Study, which is the name of this website. Click on that. It's going to ask you, do you really want to do this? So you hit Install. This is going to pop up, this little menu over here. By the way, let's say you forgot to check it or you clicked away from it too quick, you can just go back to it. And notice the options that it gives you here. You can pin it to the taskbar, to the start. Uh, so we're going to pin it to the taskbar. Yes, give it permission. And here it is down here, it's pinned now. So notice even if I have uh, closed out of edge and everything it's still there click it and it pops right back up and again you can still go into this menu right here and you can tell it to do different things so let's say i want it on the start button all right so open start and there it is right there or maybe i want to put it on the desktop i went to the menu here went to app settings Okay, create a desktop shortcut or I can auto start it. So every time I log in to uh, Windows, it'll open up for me. If I want to get rid of it, I can just uninstall it right here. Hey, I hope you find that as handy as I do. Uh, if you're wanting to run the Logos web app, I think that's the best way to do it. Install it as if it was an app using Safari, Chrome, uh, Microsoft Edge. Now, again, I told you I didn't test this out on Linux or Chrome OS. And so you tell me, uh, have you tried it on one of those? Comment below and help other followers or other uh, viewers of this uh, video. And uh, say how you did it if you had to do something a little bit different. Tell me which one you prefer. Do you like to run the desktop app and you don't care about all those other things that we said at the very beginning? Or do you prefer to run the Logos web app? Or do you... Go mobile all the time. Comment below and tell me which one and why. I really appreciate you watching this. If you don't mind, like it, subscribe it, share it. Hey, and always, you can find more information about this topic and lots of other Logos-based topics or just general Bible software over at kevinpurcell.org. Hey, I'd also really appreciate it if you check out my series that I'm working on on using Logos to prepare your sermons and then preach your sermons. Um, about one third of the way through that. So again, go to kevinpurcell.org and I would really appreciate it. And if you don't mind helping me out, in the link below there's going to be an affiliate link where you can get more Lagos tools and resources and upgrades and uh, I'll get a little bit of that and, and it really helps me out as I uh, do this labor of love. I don't make very much money at all on that, but uh, I'd really appreciate your help there.